On social media, we often hear conversations about communism, how it killed millions of people, and how it hated religion. Karl Marx, the father of communism, once said that religion is the opium of the people. He also thought that religion is the sigh of the oppressed creature, the heart of a heartless world, and the soul of a soulless situation. Marx thought that despite the suffering that comes from capitalism, religion provided an outlet to that suffering. People could worship deities and attempt to understand that their own sufferings originate from their own sinful lives and not from the capitalist system. Why on earth did the communists hate religion so much that they burnt and closed down churches and mosques, enforced atheism in schools, and sent priests into labor camps? This video is dedicated to understanding why communism hates religion. Communism and religion are two vastly different ideologies that have a complicated history throughout the 20th century. While communism is a political and economic system that aims to create a classless society where the means of production are owned by the state, religion is a system of beliefs and practices that often focuses on the spiritual and moral aspects of life. To understand communism properly, we'll need to look at the thinking of Karl Marx, the father of communism. Marx thought that capitalism, with its emphasis on profit and private ownership, leads to inequality among citizens. Marx lived during the 1800s, and at this time, Europe and North America experienced the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution saw a sharp advancement in technology and manufacturing, with lower-class people migrating from villages to cities to work. These workers would work for large companies and operate the means of production. Workers would be operating machinery to make textiles, iron, and generate steam power. The consequence of this was that poor workers were often housed in cramped living spaces and the working conditions were very difficult, with employees exposed to many dangers, including poor ventilation, trauma from machinery, and toxins from metals and dusts. At the same time, business owners, known as capitalists, began to organise labour into factories and introduced a division of labour to increase production and profitability, meaning that the factory owners became very rich. Marx thought that if we could destroy social inequality and promote a system where everyone shares the benefits of labour and work, no one would try to strive above each other and no one would be oppressed and motivated by greed. He thought that the greedy bourgeoisie, the capitalists, the people who owned the factories and machinery, were exploiting workers for their own profit. In the end, Marx thought that communism, where all property is owned by the community, would close the gap between the rich and poor, end the exploitation of workers, and free the poor from oppression. This is because each person contributes and receives according to their own ability and their own needs. Religion, on the other hand, treats human suffering very differently. Human beings across human history have suffered from oppression, famine, diseases, and as a result, they have called out for God to alleviate their suffering. Believe it or not, but the book of Genesis was written as a sign of hope for the Jews who were being oppressed by the Babylonians. Generally speaking, most religions see their own suffering and misery from a lack of spiritual purity and misalignment with God. If a human being was suffering, it was because they were dishonest, sinful, and on the wrong path, so to speak. While there are some schools of Christian thought, like liberation theology, that focus on freeing the oppressed from social inequality, it is widely criticized and dismissed in philosophical and theological schools around the world. As a whole, the suffering of man does not have to do with the outside world and economic conditions. Rather, it is the inward struggle of human beings that causes human suffering. Communist thinkers realized that these religious ideals would get in the way of the development of communism. Thinkers like Bukharin and Preobrazhinsky thought that religions confuse the minds of workers and allow them to accept the exploitation and suffering of the bourgeoisie. Even Marx thought that religion is a form of false consciousness that keeps people from recognizing their true interests and oppresses them by making them accept their place in society. Communist thinking also promoted a strong sense of atheism and materialism, which is in direct opposition to spiritual and supernatural beliefs of many religions. Under communism, it's the state that becomes the ultimate authority and source of morality. 
Marx thought that religion emphasizes the role of the individual in the alleviation of suffering, which was contrary to the goals of communism. Once again, Marx thought that once the state owned the means of production, like factories and machines, and distributed the profits equally, suffering would then be alleviated. Marx even thought that the state, or the government, must go as far as the abolition of religion and the destruction of religion, for it clashed with the ideals of communism. The Soviet Union was committed to the complete annihilation of religious institutions and ideas. Vladimir Lenin, the revolutionary, demanded that communist propaganda must be deployed to stop all forms of religion and idealistic thinking. Militant atheism became central to the ideology of the Communist Party, of the Soviet Union, and the atheists were considered more virtuous individuals. Over the years of the Soviet Union, the Soviets confiscated church property, ridiculed religion, harassed believers, and advocated for atheism in schools. Some Orthodox Christian priests and believers were tortured, executed, and sent to prison camps. Many Orthodox were subjected to psychological punishment and mind control experimentation to force them to surrender their religious beliefs. Between the years 1927 and 1940, the number of Orthodox churches in Russia fell from 30,000 to less than 500. In 1928, anti-religious education was introduced in grade 1. To remove the church's intellectuals, the Soviets propagated that only backward people believed in God. The government also conducted a massive purge of Christian intellectuals, most of whom died in camps or in prison. Under the rule of Stalin, the Soviets cracked down on Islam and the Muslims, with many mosques being turned into warehouses. In 1919, the Soviets abolished Jewish community councils, which were designed for synagogue meetings. The hostile policies of the Soviet Union is a big reason why Orthodox Christianity is barely practiced in Russia today, given that the Soviet Union only collapsed in 1991, which really wasn't that long ago. Even in China today, the Chinese Communist Party is wary of religion, for there is a concern that religion can function as an alternative to communism and undermine the Chinese people's loyalty to the government. Communism sees religion as contrary to its goals because it is a tool of oppression. For this reason, communist ideology has encouraged the promotion of atheism and materialism, leading to the suppression and persecution of religious practices and institutions in many communist countries. In the 21st century, religious belief has dropped off significantly in countries like China and Russia, where these policies were enforced. In short, religion obstructs the goals of communism, for it allows individuals to accept their suffering, whereas communism asserts that the way to alleviate suffering is for the state to own the means of production and solve inequality through that. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, consider subscribing and liking the video for more content like this.